dónde vas? Ya casi llegando acá al sur. ¿Qué se mira, güey? ¿Cómo está para allá? El agua se mira tranquila, este, solo que no he visto nada todavía. Si puedes, si encuentras algo, algo un ejemplo, güey, porfa. Sí, para allá voy. Between the months of October and January, people like Omar Martinez head out on Utah's Great Salt Lake nearly every day to collect millions of pounds of brine shrimp eggs, which are sold as food to commercial fisheries around the world. It's seven in the morning, it's freezing cold. This is the last day of their season to make any money. This all used to be lake. They had to dig this trench just to get out to the main part of the lake to do their jobs. So this season, has it been like other seasons? No. What's different? The water, the level. The first obstacle that we faced was to get out. You couldn't even get out of the harbor because the lake had dried up. See all that sand on the yeah. right side? We'll dig them out so we can make deeper. Brine trimping is big business in Utah. What we know as sea monkeys are actually microscopic crustaceans that produce tons of eggs each season. Harvesting companies bring in $60 million a year by collecting the eggs that float to the surface. But the Western Hemisphere's largest, saltiest source of water is disappearing. Low water levels make it nearly impossible for anyone to get out on the lake, particularly shrimpers. Where there used to be water, now is rocks. That's something that you can notice right away. The lake is drying out. The lake provides so many things, not only salt and you know, minerals for companies, you know, provides a way of living for everyone here. Are you worried? Yeah, I'm worried because I love this place. I love the lake, you know, if this is gone, it's hard to, uh, uh, to, to get that picture for us because we sleep here, we live here, we ate here, we work here. This is home. Not only for us, you know, animals, birds, they eat a lot from here. Satellite images show the lake drying up fast. It's lost about 750 square miles of surface area or about two and a half New York cities. That massive drop in water is creating a huge ecological problem for Utah. Toxic sediment laced with arsenic and lead is sucked up from the exposed lake bed, forming dust clouds that worsen air quality and could lead to increased rates of asthma and cancer. A disappearing lake is also making it harder for companies to mine minerals Americans use every day, like table salt and magnesium, which is used to manufacture everything from car seats to power tools and laptops. And conservationists are already seeing a decline in the millions of migratory birds that stop here each year to feed before making their way south. But brine shrimpers like Jeff Larson have seen this coming for years. Jeff works as a spotter for the brine shrimp industry. For nearly two decades, he's been flying across the lake to find floating eggs for shrimpers to harvest. This year, the first flight out, out over the lake, it, it was shocking to me how much it had changed even from last year. I didn't know if we were going to be able to shrimp. Like altimeter 3048 to altitude. When the lake level gets low, the salt content gets up enough that they don't produce cysts and eggs as much as they should. I look at how many houses and buildings have been built in my lifetime, and it's easy double what it was when I was a kid. And I think to myself, how can we have enough water for all of these people? As the lake shrinks, population is booming in Salt Lake City's metro area, increasing by over 70% in four decades. Most of the lake's water is used for irrigation by the agricultural industry. It's crazy, this entire area used to be underwater and now there's nothing here. I mean, the Great Salt Lake used to be a flourishing ecosystem, but experts say that high water usage, years of drought, could cause this entire area to vanish within the next five years. Conservationists and scientists are sounding the alarm. They're asking state politicians and residents to take more extreme measures, like reducing water use by up to 50%. Definitely we're on the brink of collapse as far as we know the lake and the 
the ecosystem. Scott Baxter kayaks around the lake to measure its water levels. As a conservationist, he attributes the lake's low levels to farmers, whose water rights were cemented by law more than 150 years ago. At what point does your legal right allow you to do something that completely wipes out an ecosystem and creates incredible hardships for the human population? We've siphoned off too much water from the tributaries for agriculture, and government officials that manage the water and the agriculturists just kept pushing forward because they didn't want to give up what they had. Is it fair to say that the farmers are the most responsible for what's happened? Farmers have consumed the most water, without question. The biggest opportunity to save water fast is changing agriculture. The way Western water laws work is that whoever claimed the water first has the right to use it first today. Some of the earliest settlers in Utah were farmers, and so they claim a majority of the water. To stop the lake from disappearing, some longtime farmers like Joel Ferry have developed systems to return some of their water back to the lake. So I'm actually gonna go pull boards on other spillways to spill it into this main channel. So this is gonna rise up. The system is set up so that excess water runs off into rivers that feed into the Great Salt Lake. Joel's not just a rancher. He was also appointed by the governor to head Utah's Department of Natural Resources, combining what might seem like two opposing positions. A lot of people point the finger at the farmers. They're the reason that the Great Salt Lake is in the shape that it's in today. Is that accurate? Human diversion, so people diverting water from the lake, is the majority of the reason of the drop of the lake elevation. And a majority of that is coming from agriculture. One of the fundamental policies of this Western water law is the idea of forfeiture. Use it or lose it. If you don't use your water, you will lose it. You're going to forfeit it. You have this, this disincentive. Or it's an incentive to use it all in any way and, you possibly well, can, so, so, or you right, lose it. So, so it's an incentive to not conserve, right? It's an incentive to use every bit. Scientists, conservationists, experts, they've all pointed to this five-year uh, destruction, disappearance of the lake. What's your perspective on that? To say it's going to drive in five years, I think, is, is alarmist and almost defeatist. You have described what's happening on the lake as a, a nu environmental nuclear bomb. Yeah. What, what, what did you mean by that? Well, I, what I said was it was a potential, potential environmental nuclear bomb. If we don't take action and we don't make the investment, we're in trouble. We invested over half a billion dollars into that lake last year. We're going to do the same this year in conservation and in improvements to the ecosystem of the lake. But is it all too little too late? I, I'm very optimistic that the efforts that we're making are going to save the Great Salt Lake. Even so, it's a last ditch effort to reverse decades of catastrophic human impact. You know, I always thought the lake was invincible. We've thrown everything at it we can. You know, we have mining on it, sewage gets treated and put in the lake. You can't be worse to the lake than we have and the lake's doing well. And when I saw this, I realized, you know, the lake is in jeopardy. This lake really could die. The lake as we know it could die, and, and that's what's happening. I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free but we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.